Hey guys, and welcome to Spoilers. The Tricards episode. Tri-cards. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's the tagline. I'm Captain Foley. And I'm Connor Kongs, and you've gone and watched our short spoiler free where we had to hold our tongues and not give up the truth of this episode. But now we are here to do a full, but neatly short, for a full epic three hour review live this evening at 10 pm. GMT, 5 pm Eastern. Stuart, what is your now spoiler filled review thoughts on this episode? Your best, your worst? And there's about a third of this episode I enjoy. There's some character beats and some, and one particular scene that was really fantastic right at the end. Um, the whole battle thing was awesome. Very um, rushed. Overall, it felt very much side questy to me, and it felt too like Dungeons and Dragons meets Lord of the Rings meets Pirates of the Caribbean. And I just didn't care, because it's not my genre. It's not what I enjoy. Because last week was the the we stretched two episodes into three, and now we're going to start. And we 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 sort of hope this week wouldn't be fully, fully set on. Now we're going to pick up another crew member. But it, it absolutely was. It was about ninety two percent another introduction episode, another let's assemble the crew. We're now four forty percent through the season, and we're still there now. When on next week, it's assembling the crew of seven. So that'll be about her. We'll, we'll, you know, episode six is when the plot's really going to kick into gear. And that's, that's a problem. It's amazing because I, I say the end, the end five minutes was incredibly rushed because for some reason they padded the third episode. It's like, it, it, oh my God, how have you slowed down one? Because that end bit should have been a good 15 minutes, could have been something really great, but it was a rushed battle, space battle, which I can do better. No offense, it was not a well handled space battle. And then one line of seven, very you know, sort of, you know, Star Wars y, where it just appeared at the end. And the rest of the episode had a lot of repeated dialogue, a lot of repeated. Like, I, I said this last night in my f- first reaction review. I, I started saying, How many times did they say, Will you bind your blade to a quest? Will you, what are you going to do to bind your blade to a quest? Like, it's very fantasy elementy, and I hated it. I hated it. And you could have taken a lot of that dialogue out. And the flashback scene was all right. I didn't mind the flashback scene. But the rest was just the same dialogue, the same dialogue, the same dialogue. It felt quite Mandalorian y in that they have not a lot of story to tell, but they can dwell on nice visuals, slow pace, but it kind of feels very full. This is an actor, Jean Luc Picard, or an actor, Patrick Jean Luc Picard, slowly going around locations, saying similar dialogue. When most of it isn't even John Luke Picardian dialogue, it's it could be said by most people, and there's obviously a few moments of the good stuff, and just this slow. We need to, we need to justify the set and these costumes. We need to justify it. We need to justify it. Okay, now we can move on because we now spent enough time on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I will I will give them credit for the, at least the flashback was quick at the start. That was an appropriate length, and then they just dwelled on the reality real stuff too long. Uh, so my overall thoughts, so Stuart, is this is an incredibly okay episode. Um, that, that was my sort of, you know, each episode I've always, I've either liked or disliked more. This one is so middle of the road. There's nothing particularly good about it. There's nothing particularly bad about it, except the Borg running ventilation scene, which, I mean, that could have been, a better scene of that could have been episode two or three to to show them getting together, like falling in love, whatever. But to have more always... How are forcing that relationship? It's also out of time because he always said I'm falling in love with you, and this scene ends with them saying that being cute, and then he says something, and then she says "f off," and then it completely undermines. Now she's not falling in love with him because she's just said "f off," so it totally makes that thing all weird as well. It's a very odd scene. The, well, the reason for that though is he's he's he knew he knew he has a, has a deadline because his sister's there yes. and he's got to get the information, sure. so he's trying to trigger her because he said, you know, the the records indicate you weren't on that transport on the day that you said said you were. Whereas she thinks she was because she has all these full memories when really she hasn't been around that long. Um, so he's trying to trigger her at the same time as trying to get close enough to her that it, it's just it is it is stupid and it does undermine what they've been doing. And I don't buy for once because Romans are known to lie and such. So when he says the Borg have uh, uh, rituals it's like, no, they don't. You're lying to her to make a cute date. Please, Memory Alpha, don't put that in canon and say, Appendix, appendix. Yes, the Borg also have rituals where they slide along, they take off their robot feet shoes and they slide along. No, of course they don't. But the, the, scene play, the scene plays if you don't understand Borg, and it should have been played for more cute if it was like, yes, they totally have rituals. They pull flowers out of the air. You know, like, but it wasn't. It was played sort of straight. And it's like, God, that doesn't play well. So that, that scene was the worst scene by an absolute mile. Um, 
and it was you could cut out 92% of that scene, have him somewhere else, and then him trigger her. Now, what do you think of then the planet that they go to specifically? Because we, we spend most of the episode on it. Vashti. It's a gorgeous looking planet. Um, but, you know, once you get into the actual city, like I said, it feels very fantasy world like. And, you know, the with the trees that are all like in fall colors all the time. And the... Although we did get the, the energy shield. Uh, there was no, you know, immigrant wall comparison. We said there might have been a, you know, Federation trying to keep them in, but it's very much there trying to keep the universe out. And I liked the idea of the random thing because then only if you know it's random to people who don't know the code, but if you know where it's gonna, if, if you're if you're allowed to go to the planet, you know it's gonna be ahead of time, and that allows for nice security. So I thought that was quite cool. I do like the point, fact they pointed out that the defense grid was all second hand, <laughs> second hand, and you know the the Renfi whatever the rescue rangers helped them install it <laughs> um so it wasn't like a top state of the line defense mm-hmm. grid well it's a new but... thing for trek is having planetary shields or at least visible i know i think we have a couple of times in tng but it's always just like they've got planetary shields take that as what you will one of the elephants in the room which is the the reuse the chateau set um you know, they've got this hollow deck on, on the ship and they now spend two or three scenes in the Chateau, which is great because we called out, oh my god, they're going back to Earth. We've now taken that out of the equation, which is brilliant, but we're getting more Chateau set. Well, that's that's a cost-saving measure, as we've said many times, and it annoys me to no end because this is Picard, who just last episode said, I tried to fit in here all these years. I tried to belong. Like, yeah, I understand it's his home and he loves it, but considering what he just said and he's going back to space for one last adventure i would have preferred to see his ready room on the enterprise d recreated in a holiday that would have made a lot more sense actually yeah but that would also cost a lot more so that's why they didn't do it well <clears throat> not if they intend to use it every other week you know it, 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 the more episodes it's in but yeah it also tells me as i've said before that, that obviously we're seeing the limitations of patrick stewart as as how they're letting him be used because that soundstage set they're also filmed in because they film the exteriors in the real vineyard the interiors are in a soundstage that aren't that don't have like windows we can see outside. So those are a soundstage. So he just filmed that allows him to be, you know, have a hotel next to the soundstage and then just walk in. Right, we're gonna film episodes two, four, seven, twelve, and eight. You know what I mean? It makes it cheaper, easier, simpler, and with a man who can't do as much, it's effective. Problem is, you lose all that visual in- interesting stuff. You're right, it connects wrongly, it should be Enterprise D, that makes a lot more sense. And it just feels cheap. And this is meant to be again the most expensive Star Trek show ever made. Where is the money going? It doesn't feel it. It really doesn't. We should have had a an interesting set, or even just I mean, any sci-fi set would help. Any uh, interior, even if it felt like a generic sci-fi interior set, have it be his crew quarters or or the briefing room, or you know, he takes up shop in in Rizzo's like, office. Rios, thank you, and, and he offers him his office because he's a nice guy, and he, and he makes a little home there. That's great, because then you you take away all the sci-fi ness by having him at, in a chateau. I I totally agree. I totally agree. It really annoyed me that they recreated a chateau in the in the holodeck. That being said, I really liked the. Uh, we got two new uh, holograms. The hospitality hologram, and I the, this line of this was my favorite line of dialogue in the whole episode, and it's totally appropriate with the swearing. I effing hate that hospi- hospitality hologram. I love that line. I love this character. <laughs> At least. Yeah, I'd even um, notice that as a swear word because it felt in context. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that was my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I loved the the end hologram. He's actually the, the full Spanish, and he's and yeah. Went, and then when they're gonna beam over the person, he's like, "Bad idea," or whatever he said, and it's like, <laughs> I just love it. And then he's just sitting there. He's like counting down. He's doing this. We're getting close to the defense grid. He's like, "Where's all that shooting we asked for?" Because you know, you fly, I'll shoot. <laughs> it's just emergency tactical hologram. I think is what he is. Now, what do you think of the Borg storyline in this specifically? The, the, we didn't get a lot of it, so at least that, you know, we, we said it wouldn't be much. But we... Yeah, there was nothing there for me. Not one thing I enjoyed about that. I, I mean, seeing them in the mess hall was all right. But I did boring like some of the... set. I know, but I did like, it felt like a nightclub. I like a lot of the dialogue there, honestly. Like, are you Tal Shiar? No. If you were Tal Shiar, would you still say no? Yep. <laughs> it's like, spot on. Good stuff, good stuff. It's like I've said before, they only have so much story, clearly, and they didn't, they're, they're drip feeding it and then padding around that. 
you know, whereas normally in Star Trek and other shows, you have a single episode with story, and then in shows where they have a bigger arc, you also have a larger arc and it's all put together. Without a single episode story, a strong one, things just kind of meander. And this week we did have a single story. It just wasn't very interesting, nor nor very well done. I expected to see Hugh in this episode. Like they're they're, they're talking about, they're talking about the uh, the Borg files. They might have the information on the ship. Why all the Romulans went crazy specifically? Um, they did mention that. Uh, These things we've said. These are the questions we've exactly. said. Exactly. And he's like, I, you know, I, I don't have access to it, but I, I know someone that does. We never get an answer to that, whether it's his sister that's going to get the information, because he does ask her that question later. And then she goes into the whole, what have you done for me? Um, but I, I really expected to see Hugh in this episode, and there was just not enough Borg stuff. Like, it, it's almost forgettable from this episode for me. One of the things I, I thought that really pulled against the episode, and it, and it overstates welcome, and again tells me padding, the, the, the Picard stuff with the nuns is fine up until a point. It's a bit too long, but it's fine, right? When he starts, when he says nine minutes till they beam, and he flings off this Romulan's only sign, just to Seven get... Seven minutes. Seven minutes till the beaming. Yeah. So he pulls off a sign knowing it's going to cause a fight. He's asking, literally, he, he's like, a, he's like an, a, a glam for punishing. He's asking to be abused here, and then he's surprised that people aren't serving him, and then it causes a fight, then to then force the other guy to come in. I mean, what sort of contrived, padded, weird scene that felt so out of character? That entire thing should not have been written or filmed. It was awful, in my opinion. We can beat me up in seven minutes. And he's like, all right. And then he goes to the side to have a drink. As I said last night, I would have just leaned against the wall and waited. Because that's horse shit. Um, then, he, yeah, he takes the sign down, throws it down. Words down, I might add. And the very next scene, when he walks over it, the words are flipped up. That annoys me. That's just an editing mistake. I notice those all the time. But, yeah, I don't think he wanted to start an issue, really. But the thing is, he's a smart man. He can feel the tension in the air. Does he really think that making a mockery of their current beliefs, that w literally walking all over them, that he's just going to laugh it off? He, kn he knows that something might happen, and he's totally unprepared for it. This is, not, this is not what Picard would do. He would not be that disrespectful in that way, in a situation where he's leaving. It's just to give a reason for Elnor to come in and stab somebody. That's all it is. It's out of character to me. He's right. If if he'd leaned on the wall and started talking to the guy, and he'd said, "I don't want to hear of it," and like, yeah, you're right, leaned, and the words there, and he says, "I don't think this sign's a good idea." Well, we don't care what Federation thinks. I recognise you. Yes, I was a Praetor once. That would have been much cleaner, much better, and then the guy could have kicked off. But to throw it down is so un out of character. I, although that being said, I did like the senator. I liked his character, I and I liked, and I liked the actor. It's a Me shame too. he got decapitated. That was unnecessary. Yeah, and I, well, I love how Picard uh, sla slaps him down for that. Like, you know, you're in, you're working for me now. Essentially, you you will act when I, how you know, listen to me. I'll when the fact that Elnor says, uh, uh, you know, you do not choose to die. That's that's, that's good dialogue. I just wanted to f fall back on the Borg thing for just a second. There's one fantastic little tidbit in that scene where they're going to the the exhaust valve or whatever it is. Um, to, to do the, the, the floor skating um, is when he Narek says something and as they walk by camera Soji does the data head thing like hmm, uh, which was really cool, cool I didn't catch it the first time caught it the second time it's very noticeably data it's a nice Jonathan Frakes touch I'm sure hmm. from a director um, because well she does... wasn't a fan of Star Trek originally so she wouldn't know yeah about you know. and that's the other thing I was going to say about the uh, Elnor thing at the end um, where the, the the other Romulans like, well, that's, you're not much for a disruptor, and he's, should we beam you out now? Yes, now. He doesn't say two to beam out. So why did they beam Elnor? They could have. There was a bunch of people around. He did not say two to beam out. It was just yes, beam out. And I listened for the dialogue. The other times I watched it, there's no indication for them to beam out two people. So that was contrived and messy but i'll give absolute props neither of us were excited about uh legolas i think he did an absolutely fine job and just like the the captain guy was much less bad than you thought he was going to be and i give them so much credit for the actor for being good currently this show the best thing that's going for it is the cast were very well picked discovery a lot of them are forgettable and they don't even care about them until you know some scenes this cast is a good cast. Well done. The stories might not be there. The dialogue might be fine. Sometimes great, sometimes a bit poor. But the cast is there. So well done them, because he did good. 
yeah, Elnor, Elnor is fairly likable so far. Um, again, I was, like you were with Rios, you weren't sure you are going to like him. I was pretty sure I wasn't going to like Elnor at all, um, but eventually, yeah, from what I've seen so far, I like him. Now let's get to the, the meat of what we're going to love, and that's the ship stuff, because that's my favorite scene of the thing. It's like the best visceral dog fight we've seen in Star Trek, oh, essentially. Uh, really? Yeah, well, I think so. I would call it one of um, the worst space fights ever. It, could, it, it, oh, really? I disagree. Some of those shots are beautiful with the, the ship well, flying by and stuff. Okay. Shots, yes, but as a sequence, they kept focus on the inside because obviously they obviously oh, ran out of yeah, money, yeah. and and they didn't focus on like one problem I've had this with. I was in a lot of fan films, CG, a lot of battles. When you have a ship that's so small, the scaling you can't follow it in the same way as a big ship. So it felt very. They just didn't want to dwell on the ship's exteriors. The shots we did get were nice, but it was like we ran out of money. We don't want to commit to this scene. Let's not give it the full budget and scope it should have, which was a shame. Okay, when you look at it that way, yes, fine. It's not the best fight scene, but just some of those shots were glorious. Mm. Like seeing the, the bird of prey fly right by camera, mm -hmm. the other two ships like zip by. Mm -hmm. Like there's some beautiful shots and some good close ups of that bird of prey. Mm -hmm. I love that they said it was an ancient bird of prey. I that was great. Antique bird of prey, yeah. Okay. Um, Which does not, does not say it's TOS. That's no. a very underscript. I just take it as a TOS refit. It's a yeah, later think, TOS one. I like to, I, 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 I prefer to think that it's a refit era. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, like a movie era. Um, and just the way that they to finish that ship off, just slicing off the nacelle, I thought was a cool visual, but didn't really seem to fit. But then again, these are newer ships, even though smaller, newer weaponry against older hull material. Right. And then the, the fact that the bird of prey kept firing afterwards, it wasn't just finished. I love that. It got three shots in, took out the other ship. So it, it, it's not a. It's a problematic scene in that in that they don't they will don't commit to how shields work or don't work, because yeah, the the the, the but this bird this they say is antique, but it's also it's been taken by the guy that sort of runs this planet, and it's obviously capable of warp weapons. Like it's obviously enough of a threat. They say it can outrun us. Like he calls out that we can't outrun them, which means their warp is stronger than their warp. Like this small ship isn't. It can't be. You know, don't think of it as the Delta Flyer of the fleet. It's not advanced enough to take on anything. It's probably medium powered at best. This other ship, while it might have old materials, they're not going to leave a hundred year old shield generator in it. It's going to have as modern tech as you can do. And if it's the bounty hunter warlord of this guard of the sector, like because their their weapons do do burn through Seven's fighter in very like two shots, and they do take down shields down to twenty percent in one hit. So it's obviously capable, and yet they can beam right through the right through the shields. Uh, one and a half minutes into battle because, you know, it wasn't probably set up what they can and can't do, how powerful they are and aren't, because that's not only really how shields work or don't work. Um, and then to see just take out Seven's ship in one shot was again a bit like, well, this is... It, it felt rushed, a very, very rushed battle. They didn't want to commit money to it. They put too much time in the early stuff, enough time in this battle. Um, one issue I had with the battle was they don't... I don't think they understand that they're very much two-dimensional thinkers like Khan. Because they're talking about how they're, he's pushing us into the grid. It's like, yeah, you had enough time beforehand to get away from the planet. Um, it just, it was, it was awful as far as that goes. And what's um, funny is that the Red Lasers didn't even play a part in the battle. It wasn't as if they took out Seven or they took out the Bird of Prey. I was expecting one or the other. They didn't do jack shit. Yeah, because all you have to do, so the Bird of Prey's there, ship said do this. Right, now away from the planet. That's... It. Or just any direction, just go. <laughs> There's so many directions in space. But then the end, we get seven of nine beaming in, and by God, it was obvious because they kept saying, "He's hailing us, his ship." You know what? You don't always assign a personal pronoun to an unknown. They would say their ship, the ship. The fact they say he nine times, obviously them saying, "Oh look, we say he," because it's not a he. <laughs> Come on, guys, I didn't, stop saying I didn't, he. I didn't get that the first it time. Bothered I had me no idea. So much. I had no idea it was going to be seven. Sylvia know. called it when she first saw it. First time I saw it, I did not think it was going to be seven. But no, I did. I, that was a genuine surprise for me, and I really enjoyed that. And I didn't. I didn't hear the pronouns, you know, the him, 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 the first time. Second time, it is very obvious. I was filmmaking brain it. I was like, "You're doing that to take to mean people like like you wouldn't think it, but it they went too far." But when she beamed in, I was like, "Okay, good. We're not going to waste time finding her." Okay, now we've skipped a little bit of story. That's good. And she might actually be a major part of this season. 
or just pop in for the episodes. And obviously, she was promoted. I mean, she was in all the red carpets more than Brent was, who's obviously now only probably in like three episodes max at this point. So hopefully, she's in almost all the episodes going forward. But why is she there? I mean, I have something to talk about. Maybe, maybe she's working for Starfleet. She's been following Picard. Um, well, no, because there was a signal saying Picard's at this planet, and well, remember the shield grid was given to them by the Rangers. So obviously, they they said they can't defend this area because they're running out of resources, but they're still monitoring it. That's their job. Seven's Rangers. You think she's a Ranger? Well, it's in her bio that was released a while back. Oh, I didn't know that. See, that just ruined it for me. Thanks. Well, that's why she flew on a Ranger ship. Um, sorry, uh, I didn't know it was a Ranger ship either. Yeah, I didn't like. Yeah, I liked I, that fine the reveal, but I thought it really l- lowers her character because if she warps in with a ship that cannot is not capable of taking on the ship, attacks it, knowing she can't win against it, and gets defeated easily, she's a smart woman. You don't go into battle completely out underprepared and have no plan, and like she was going to die. That's not the seven we know. She's really got lax and dumb because she should know better. It's not logical. I know that might be the only ship she had, but she wouldn't engage it in that way. I really like the, uh, kind of changing gears for a second, the, the uh, emergency navigational hologram. A hideous ship. And then, and then Rios is like, magnificent pilot, though. I mean, that that was, again, some great, great delivery, and was, it was kind of a hideous ship. But the, 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 This episode needed to be, needed to slice about 13 minutes out of it, and there's some really good Easily. stuff in between. No, I agree. I agree. Just the pacing this season is all over the place. They, I mean, this would be a good season to re-edit after the fact and like readjust it, and you could really improve it, I think. Because there's a lot of good stuff there, but it is padded with a lot of repeated dialogue and, and such. So And weak yeah. moments. Just weak, weak moments. Um, and that's why this episode is, is a has lots of okay stuff, a few nice touches, a few, wow, what a stupid touch, and uh, again, another sign of padding, and that's now three out of four have been padded. That's a really bad thing. Only 10 episodes, guys. And I'm watching Babylon 5 for a convention, and boy, I mean, go watch Babylon 5 if you haven't seen it compared to this show. I mean, the writing is so much better, the characters are better. If it managed to do single episode stories with sub stories, with character motivation and large arc, I mean, much better than this show. But boy, this is not pushing the levels it should be pushing with the talent involved. It really is. It's starting to slip now. Every week it's slipping further in the. They're just sort of getting through it. Well, this this show is suffering from no episodic feel at all. Um, that, that's my view. It's just it, it's it's all one story, and it's just not working. There's not uh, enough story. We, we they have some they episodic. Haven't... We need some episodic elements, which are sadly, I think we're going to get next week, which I'm not looking forward to. Oh god, to. that's an awful looking next time on. I guess that's it for this episode. Um, a lot I... to talk about this week when you look at sub things. I gotta rate this one probably like a six out of ten. Well, we haven't so. been doing ratings in this style of video, Stuart. We only I know, but I'm, I gotta, I gotta call it. I don't care. I enjoyed the the Rios moments and the, the final battle, mm-hmm. and the and Elnor. That's... Elnor, he impressed you. Yes, but it took so long to get there that I'm kind of like, eh, about him. Uh, we need to start fresh next episode with him. So. Next episode, the real the real series begins because now the pilot's finally over after four hours. Well, not four hours, three and a no, half hours. It, next episode is going to be like another Canto Bite episode. Exactly, Literally. exactly. Because that's the lesson you. they learned from Last Jedi: take Canto Bite and do it yourself. I said probably a six out of ten for me. I would agree. I think five's too harsh, but six is being perfectly generous. Right. Anyway, guys, what did you think of this episode? Put your thoughts down in the comments down below. And do not forget to check out our full episode review and breakdown later this evening because we get down into every little nitty-gritty detail and just discuss it. And we love doing it live because we can interact with you guys. You put in your thoughts, things you notice, what we might not have noticed, and it's really a fun discussion. So you can come join us live and help us out as well with Super Chats and stuff. So Super, super do. important. But another way, if you can't join in that you know, two or three hour live which only happen you know, once a week for that. Do uh, give us money on Patreon if you can, because we do these contents for you all week, every week, just to enjoy. And if you can put in one buck a month, two bucks a month, five, ten, twenty, whatever, that does go towards us and allowing us to be confident that we can put the, just the time. Because we can't do real, real jobs if we need to do this stuff, but we want to do this stuff and you guys enjoy this stuff. So if enough of you give, then you can get it and keep enjoying it. And we have the passion still to keep doing after almost six years now, five and a half years. 
Uh, so please post if you can. Or one time or go to trekyards.com, click a donate button, or use the email trekyards at hotmail.com. That is our PayPal. There you go. Or just like, subscribe, join. Just watch the videos. Yeah, we'll make them for you. A new feature. Hit, click the join button down by the subscribe. You can become a commander, captain, Ooh. or admiral level, and get some cool emojis and badges and bonus stuff. And yeah, it, it's fun. Go do it. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. I am Connor Franks. Bye, guys. See you guys later. <laughs>